Um, Cause then I can go through this applications of hypothesis testing or AB testing. Okay, so real quick, you guys cool if I go a little bit over for announcements afterwards? Awesome, cool. So AB testing. All right, I'm gonna close these guys since we're going through here. Now AB testing is actually gonna be really, really straightforward because the main thing about AB testing is that it's literally hypothesis testing. Like that's actually what AB testing is. But the big th difference about AB testing is that we just have to consider how we get our data. So basically the main thing that you should know about um, A-B testing is like when you shouldn't use it or, you know, when you should at least be aware when you're doing it. So the biggest feature is like when there's new features to old use, um, a new feature or old uh, old users. Why did I say two? Come on, Victor. Or old users. So one is called the novelty effect. Basically, it's that when you get something new, like imagine like someone's like a big fan of like this thing and they get a new update. They're like, oh, cool. You know, and they're like, oh, I love this new update. This is awesome. This is amazing. Um, but that effect eventually dies down. So a classic example of A-B testing is like if you have a new website layout, does it increase bookings from sites? Um, there's a classic, there's a really um, famous, I don't know, famous, but infamous example of like Google of uh, testing, um, doing A-B tests on like over 50 different like colors of blue to see if that drove engagement and stuff like that. Um, which might be over the top about like how much that really matters. But one thing is that the novelty effect kind of happens where someone's like, oh, wow, there's this new, awesome, amazing thing. Like, oh, if they just put it out. And then like after like three weeks, they're like, oh, whatever. Um, I kind of wrote this little scenario. It's like, it's like we sold out of shampoo on our first day. Everyone, will, everyone must like this, right? It's like, well, or every day will be like this. Well, clearly not, right? Um, it's not going to be, it's going to change over time. So one thing to know is that if you have um, a new thing, you might actually give it some more time to actually notice there's a difference. Okay. Uh, change of versions kind of like the opposite of this is the people who are kind of like, I like to call grumpy old men who basically say, oh, it's changed, right? Uh, you, I liked the way it was and now it's different and are uh, grumpy, um, which is honestly sometimes just what happens. And then eventually people get used to it. They're like, oh, whatever. Um, so the problem is you don't know if these are going to affect. So what's the biggest solution between these two? You know what you do? You give it time. Um, give enough time, eventually this, these effects should wear off too. Also note that the number, the kind of people you have it, for example, if you have people um, enrolling in a beta test, for example, and then they change the thing, those people who are enrolling in beta tests are probably the people who like the new thing. They already like it a lot, so they'll probably be likely to do novelty effect, right? So you, you have to kind of be aware of those kind of things of who you're sampling as well. Um, so again, one way we can do this is basically just, I mean, basically the other things just wait for that, right? Just have things over time. Um, one is like you can make for the, like the old users to be replaced with new users. So one way you can kind of think about this is that someone who comes into the system never before, right? Um, who hasn't been using this, hasn't had a huge part. And those are probably people that you care about the most in a lot of ways, in a lot of situations. Um, you might just have to wait for more newer users to replace the older users in your test to make sure it was actually um, a real effect. Um, other ones too is just wait for old users to get used to it, which sometimes doesn't happen. Sometimes old users just are so frustrated that they will never accept that change, but you know, that's fine. Um, just kind of be aware of it. Okay, sound pretty good? All right, um, all right, so I'm a little bit over, but that's fine because we said we're all good. So let's see here. Um, I'm trying to think how much I should go with this. Yeah. Hmm. Look at this, I have something prepared from earlier. All right, cool. So we're gonna go off of that. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a test, a uh, little walkthrough. So I'm just gonna generate some data. Don't really care about how they generate. It's just random stuff, right? And I call it variable one, variable two, because I'm not creative, okay? So you can basically see here, the idea here is that we have different participants and there's some metric that we're measuring. This could be like click-through rate. This could just be, you know, number of times using the site, whatever, right? Um, and then what we can do is say, okay, we're going to go ahead and assign our groups. So we might actually design, uh, like this is an experiment group, this is the control group, um, and then we're gonna record this information. Now in reality, as you saw, I just generated this data and I'm just gonna quickly assign it. Um, you typically would just have the user IDs is control, zero or one, and then we would record variable one, variable two. But in this case, because we're generating it, I'm just generating it ahead of time. So just know there's a little bit of difference. But that's fine. You can pretend that this has all been generated after assigning control and experiment. Okay. And then what we can do is like, okay, let's go ahead and check out if um, these groups are similar to each other. So one quick good thing that you should probably do in general, is just literally plot out the data. So here I'm just looking at um, the control in experiment groups. 
between variable one and variable two, uh, or at least experiment um, and control between vari variable one, oh no, no, in variable one, sorry. So you can see here like in orange here is uh, the experimental, or sorry, it's the control group, and then the blue one is the experimental group, and then similar thing with um, variable two. Okay, so like you can see here, there's probably not very much of a difference between the two. And that kind of makes sense because we just randomly assigned it after generating data. Uh, but there could be a real difference between variable one and variable two. In this case, we can see, hey, that could be a difference, right? There's definitely a different spread. And remember, this is generated data. But we might want to see, like, is there an actual difference between this group versus the other group? So I made a quick thing um, just to basically check if we have significance. So note that I'm basically using the stats, um, SciPy stats using t-test index, right? And basically group one, group two, equal variance, well, just t-test, right? So B equals false. And you get T and P. And then basically say, hey, is it significant if P is less than alpha? It's significant, at least for, you know, this type of test that we're looking at. So I have this um, function. And then I actually have one that's just for experiment versus control, just so we can kind of check it out. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and test out experiment versus control. And then we'll test out, let's say, uh, oh, samples df is the function. And then we're actually going to test out um, let's call var one. So we're basically seeing, is there a difference between these two different groups? And any guesses if there's a difference between these two? Yeah, probably not, right? So if you run this guy, yeah, sure enough. False meaning it's not significant, and then you get the p-value, 0 0.55. Uh, if you're wondering about var variable two, probably not different either. Yeah, false, right? But let's say if I want to see it significant between this group and this group, then I put these guys in here. So I'm looking at var one versus var two. And any guesses if it's significant with the 5% uh, significant level? I see some nods, so. Yeah, so really, really small p-value, right? So there is significant difference, at least at the, um, well, I mean, at almost every significance level at this case. Um, but that's kind of essentially how you would do A-B tests. The main thing about A-B tests, like this is the easy stuff. Like this is the hypothesis testing. This is the stuff in general in A-B testing is manipulating the data, is to make sure you have defined groups and how you filter through and everything. Right? That's going to take you the most effort. This is easy stuff. This is stuff that we kind of rate it. And you can see, like, look at this. I'm, I made two functions just because I could, but this could have easily just been one function, or even if I wanted to, just one whole line if I wanted. Okay. Cool. Sound good? All right. Any questions before I kind of end this guy? No? All right. So I'm going to stop recording.